All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over my Yard Max hydraulic dump track barrow. Um, I picked this unit up about, I think it's September, November, or October, November last year. Uh, for this, I've used a handful of times so far. I've just kind of been too busy to where I've been doing other jobs. I haven't really made time scheduling too many jobs for this thing, but this thing is very handy for the jobs I do use it on, the jobs I have planned for it in the future, and also some other things I didn't expect it'd be handy for. Um, so let's get right into it. Basically, this unit has a 1,100 pound capacity, which that means it can haul 1,100 pound capacity plus the weight of the machine. And to put that into perspective for you guys, 1,100 pounds is basically the weight of my 52 inch Z3X. So basically, if the weight of that mower was sitting in this hopper right here, it would handle it no problem, uh, which is kind of amazing to think about. So this machine is built to haul a lot of weight and to move it around fairly quickly for the price point it sits at right now. Now, I did buy this thing for about, I think it was around $3,200 is on sale. Uh, I think I got it through Home Depot, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think it was Home Depot. Uh, and they had it delivered to my house for me. Um, and then I also got this plate compactor with it, which I'll get to in a minute. But basically, you have two different options with this track bar here. You can either get this concrete hopper, or they also make a flatbed hopper for it. Now, I haven't seen many of those around. Um, I got the concrete hopper because that was really the only one I could find. The flatbed hopper or flatbed has foldable down sides, so that kind of aims more towards the landscaper or you know hauling bricks and stuff around. But you know this does just fine. I don't really see any inconvenience for it. And if for some reason I do concrete one time, I can use it for concrete. So it's a double-edged sword there. Um, there are two different units two different types of this machine so you have the 1100 pound capacity machine but they also make yard max also makes a lower grade 660 pound machine that's quite a bit cheaper it's around the 22 to 2500 dollar price range um, and it's you know payload capacity is 660 pounds i think the machine weighs in around probably the three to four hundred pound range while this one weighs in about the five to six hundred pound range uh, so these are pretty light machines they're lighter than my z1 uh, 36 inch stand on mower so you know 36 inch stand on mower these are lighter than that and the weight is distributed over these tracks and so this really doesn't tear up yards unless you just do a complete zero turn if you're cautious with your turns and take gradual uh, low degree turns. This won't tear up turf even when it's wet. Um, now when it's fully loaded it's a different story. Um, if it's wet it'll make more deeper imprints into the yard just depending on how much weight you have loaded in this. But when it's dry it's not an issue. Most of you guys probably will use this with a combination when the skids there anyway so y'all probably put down plywood or some sort of material to protect the grass if you're running this over a bunch but you know this thing i've used on quite a few different jobs so far i've used it for helping pulling out a tree stump a small little tree stump uh, a brick mortar job a rock job and then also a mulch job now mulch i have sack bags of mulch like 20 or no about 15 bags of mulch high on this thing and it's nowhere near maxing out the payload it's just kind of maxing out the space and it hauled around just fine um, rock it does fine with like i said you know this thing has a payload of 1100 pounds now so y'all probably asking well which machine should i get should i get the 660 pound weight class machine or should i get jump ahead to this 1100 pound machine the big reason i went with this machine is the hydraulic dump feature which i'll show you all that in action minute um, you know if you have the these things fully loaded to 1100 pounds you don't want to be trying to dump this thing with your hand 
it's not really safe in my opinion and also it can harm your back in the future and I was just kind of thinking of that as like you know I'd rather spend the extra $1,300, $1,500 on a machine that won't break my back that's going to be easier on me and that will also make the job more efficient as well so to me it just depends on what you do if you're going to be using these things for a lot of loose light material then go with the 660 pound machine because that doesn't have the hydraulic dump option on it but if it's light loose material then you should be able to dump that bed and no problem at all but if you're using it for rock or bricks bricks you don't really dump out but still if you're using it for rocks or dirt um, this machine is really the one you want and I'd recommend you guys buy um, for the extra money you know it's just it's the best bang for your buck um, and also some of the things that this thing performed well on is you know lifting up things I have a chain here and I lift up this 200 or 195 pound clay compactor in there uh, you know that way I'm not doing the heavy lifting I've done it with some other heavier items uh, as well so it's not really a forklift but if you have a plate compactor or something that you buy in combination with this you know you can lift it up into the bed with the hydraulic dump feature and I'll show you guys how to do that as well um, it's very simple so and then also you can get a uh, snow slash dozer blade with this I wouldn't really call it a dozer blade it's not really going to be tearing up earth with it more like spreading material with it so this machine is can do a couple different jobs it's not a skid steer where it can do like 90 different jobs but if you're creative you can use it to do you know some things it wasn't originally designed to do now will that tear up the machine it just depends on how you use it I've used this to kind of help pull out small tree stumps I'm talking maybe like three to four inch tree stumps um, you know or bush stumps you know uh, I just chain it to one of these thick uh, steel pillars across the frame and that did just fine uh, but I do see getting the dozer blade for this machine eventually it's about a $250 add-on uh, to help spread material eventually uh, before I get a stand-on skid steer so this machine is very versatile for the price point uh, but anyway, I'm going to show you guys around this machine real quick. All right, guys. So I got the bed uh, raised up here and I got my plate compactor kind of how I set it up when I lift it in to the bed there. I'll get to that in a minute. And yes, I know uh, gas can be leaking out or oil can be leaking out. I've done this before. Not much. Or very little has leaked out. Although this gas cap is a little broken and it'll pop out sometimes, but there's not much gas in there. So don't worry. I know what I'm doing so here we got the uh, dump bed tilted up here to show you all some of the frame components and the track tensioner adjustments here now you shouldn't have to worry about tensioning the tracks when you buy this machine obviously that's already pre-assembled um, when I bought this machine it just came into a big crate and basically everything was assembled on it I just had to put engine oil in it now one annoying thing this gear selector is very, very tricky um, to, you know, get into gear. I had this, it came with this little plate that had the gears on there for you. But really what happened is this has a little bit of play in it. And the more you selected the gears, it would kind of jostle around and wouldn't allow you to shift into said gears. So you can either take this off or you can kind of cut out more notches on each side here. Um, or just make it just a complete rectangle in general if you really want I just took it off I wasn't a fan of it um, but you still have you know the rough area where the gears are at and you kind of just feel it uh, after a while so once you get used to it but basically that's one of the really annoying things um, it's not that big of a deal breaker but it is something I wish they maybe a little bit more effort into was making the gear shifts a little bit more smooth now i am willing to give them the benefit of the doubt it may just be the machine i have but the reviews i've seen 
some people have had the same issue. So it could just be a dud. I don't know, but it's not that big of a deal. Overall, there are some small things that they could have, you know, put a little bit more money into. I like these brakes. They don't when the machine isn't on or when you're actually when you're actually moving trying to brake, it's a little jerky to brake each track. Uh, other than that, that's the only other issue I've seen. I've kind of seen some production line quality issues, I guess I'd say. Um, this motor, when I got it, it was tilted. I had to loosen those bolts and straighten it out. Um, it was just kind of all over the place. There were some bolts they didn't tighten. Um, they overfilled this hydraulic reservoir up to where when it was on, it was kind of leaking hydraulic oil out of this cap. It was way too overfilled. Um, so I had to drain some out of that. Uh, other than that, it was basically pretty good. I had to tighten up some hydraulic hose fittings. And that's really the only thing I had to do. Um, and then you can see down here, here's the track frame. It's pretty heavy duty for, you know, what it's made to do. You got your track tensioners there. And then this is generally the point I'll chain, put a chain here if I'm like trying to pull a little stump out or around here if I want a little bit more leverage. Um, and it doesn't really get in the way. I generally have the bed dump down with some weight in it. Um, but obviously don't try and pull out like a full fledged tree stump with this thing. That's not what it's meant to. I pull out little bush stumps or like two to five inch, like little tree stumps, not huge tree stumps. That's not what it's meant to do. You will probably tear something up if you try and do that. Now, um, the motor on this thing is just a very small Briggs and Stratton motor. It's similar in size to a Predator 212. Um, it's around that CC, it's a 208 CC motor. So it's probably around, you know, the five, eight horsepower range. I'd guess five horsepower, but this thing is very gear reduced. Um, but when you do put it into third gear, it does go a pretty decent speed. Um, so uh, it's, it's pretty good speed, especially for these small yards. You don't have to go 20 miles an hour with this thing to get the job done. It goes around, I think four or five miles an hour. So when it's in third gear, now if you're hauling something very heavy, they generally recommend you stay in two or one. This is sort of like the transport speed. And the reverse is very slow. It's probably around the same speed as one, uh, but I'll kind of cycle through the gears here and show y'all uh, how fast it goes here in a minute. But I kind of want to show y'all how the hydraulic dump works. Um, basically all it does have your lever here you just pull this out and you can go up or down i know i did that in reverse but this is up and then this is down so very simple um controls are very simple this is what makes you go so this is engages the clutch and then this is your brake for your right track and this is your brake for your left track this is your engine throttle this is your kill switch. So, very, very easy machine to learn how to drive. Um, easier than driving a car, basically. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Then you have your transmission, your sub-transmission down here. I think there's some sort of like belt jack shaft that goes down and turns. Yeah, there's a belt jack shaft down there that basically turns the, the transmission wheel down there whatever um so you do have a belt i think it's a belt i don't think it's a chain i'd assume it's a belt i don't think they put chains on this yeah it's a belt so you got a belt in there to drive your transmission you can see that big pulley in there so it's very gear reduced um and i don't know what kind of transmission they put in there it's some sort of t-box kind of transmission you know the ones they use on the walk behind something similar because it obviously has to have a differential for you to break each track it's not a neutral steer machine so you do have to break each individual track one track won't go in reverse when the other one's going forward so it is a traditional 
braking system. It's not a neutral steer or zero turn system. So, but yeah, let me show you guys this thing lifting up this plate compactor in there. And we'll talk a little bit about that plate compactor. All right, we're gonna lift up this plate compactor in there. this chain here it's not going to bend it it's pretty heavy duty as long as you ease it down now if you're jerking it up and down then yeah it's probably going to damage something but as long as you're easy on it it's not going to damage this bed um, now if i'm lifting something heavier i thought about uh, getting somebody to weld some d-rings or some sort of attachment point down towards the bottom of the bucket here because that's where it's more stable obviously when you have a connection point up top and you're trying to lift heavier stuff it has more leverage to bend things so if you do get one of these and you want a little bit of a attachment point for a chain inside the bucket just probably weld it towards the bottom but still enough gap to where you have enough room to hook your chain in uh, you can also put some probably on these points here too I'll probably put them on this. That's a lot thicker um, and supportive, and it shouldn't get in the way of it dumping. Uh, but I'll probably have some of those welded on eventually. Other than that, that's how the hydraulic dump works. Let's show you uh, this thing driving around, then we'll talk about this plate compactor. All right, guys, we're behind the plate or the Yard Max uh, track dump barrel here. About to start it up. We got our on switch on. I just started this up so I shouldn't need any choke. Just pull this handle here. Now we're gonna start out in first gear. It's not a neutral steer machine. And to turn right, you just do the same thing with that brake over there. I don't know if y'all could have heard me over that, but that's basically how you drive it. I could see at the beginning, I was kind of struggling to get into gear. 
And it's kind of like that with that guard on there. You're, you're kind of finicking with it a little bit. And the more you use it, the more you'll get used to it. Um, and then obviously, you got some adjustment down here with this bolt and kind of moving around and kind of set it. I think what's happening is that sometimes slips. So, you know, the gauge of where you think it at is always kind of changes. Um, but yeah, that's how you drive the Yard Max. It's the same thing on the other machine. Very, very simple. Uh, let's talk about this plate compactor real quick. If I'm not mistaken, uh, this thing weighs about 105 pounds. I was off. So this is pretty light. Um, once it's full of fuel, it probably weighs around 115 pounds in oil and everything. Uh, that's the dry weight. Uh, but this has the same motor on it that this machine has. I think this is around a 3,000 pound like pressure plate compactor, supposedly. I don't know the model number on this. Uh, I may say it somewhere. Uh, move that belt out of the way. But I can't remember the like name of this. It's just a, and it's just called a Yard Max 3,000 pound or 1,000 pound plate compactor. Uh, this is the biggest one they make. Uh, Yard Max does. So this was around 800 bucks. I think 600 to 800 bucks uh, if I remember right um, maybe not 800 bucks I can't remember but I think it was around 600 or something but it's very affordable plate compactor uh, I, from what I heard these little motors these Honda clones that Briggs and Predator makes are pretty reliable I use like you know the Predator 212s on my mini bike uh, and I had a Honda clone that used to be on it that I built up so I mean now these motors are pretty reliable as long as you just keep the oil on them and just you know, take care of them, change the air filter and everything, spark plug. Just keep an eye on them, they should do you fine. It's basically just a Honda clone is all it is. Um, cheaper parts, but from what I've heard, they're fine uh, for this sort of stuff. Um, one thing I do have to adjust, uh, this motor is a tad crooked. And yes, I know there's some oil on there. I put some oil on it and accidentally spilled, but... Uh, I mean, there is a, this isn't exactly a line, so I do have to fix that a little bit. Other than that, it's a good machine. You get what you pay for. It's not the best plate compactor by any means, but it's a good starting one for me for the small jobs I do. Uh, and then same thing with this track bower here. So this is sort of my updated video on it. I'll try to get some videos of it on the job site for you guys. It's just kind of hard. Not many of my customers like their property being recorded so it's kind of hard to get some footage of this thing but um i'm looking at hopefully getting some property for my own shop uh within the next year or two so i'll definitely be using this thing around here so i'll definitely get you guys some good footage of it eventually but uh until then i'll, I'll just have to play it by ear but if you guys want more videos on this if there's something i missed if you have any questions just let me know in the comments um I know I couldn't give, give you all an exact model number on it. it. They just sometimes they just generally call it a really long, boring number or the Yard Max Track Barrel Hydraulic Dump Track Barrel. It's really how it is. If you search up Yard Max Hydraulic Dump Track Barrel, this will pull up. Uh, the dealers are generally Home Depot, surprisingly Walmart, and Tractor Supply. Um, so you can get this thing ordered from there. Uh, I did try to order this from Tractor Supply, and they only had the smaller version of this. They couldn't find this one on their software. That might just be my Tractor Supply, but go ahead and try it. Just see what's around. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, another video will be coming out soon about my truck because it just hit 100,000 miles, so I'll be doing a review on that. But stay tuned for that video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.